Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. I hope you're having a wonderful day. You're listening to or watching the Service Business Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Church Blissett, and I have my lovely co-host, Joshua Crouch, uh, sitting across from me virtually. And uh, today we have uh, Michael Bazinski, uh, goes by Buzz. So um, welcome to the show, Buzz. Uh, I am super excited to talk about this. Uh, how much money are you potentially leaving on the table because you have a crappy website? Uh, it's uh, Buzz is the author of The Rule of 26. And uh, just so I don't forget, because uh, if you've listened to the show, watched the show ever, you know that uh, my ADD will kick in sometimes and I'm just good. I go down rabbit holes. Uh, rule of 26.com and uh, buzzworthy.biz. That's the two places you need to visit. I'll put them in the show notes. But uh, with that being said, welcome to the show, Buzz. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do. Um, you, We've talked a little bit before the show and uh, you're from all over the place. You have tons of experience, right? worldly travels. Yes, I have been around. Uh, the, so what Johnny Cash says, I've been everywhere, man. I've, I've, that's my mantra. Uh, that's like about 26 countries now. Um, I was in the Air Force for 10 years, uh, third generation Air Force brat. Um, grew, uh, born in England, grew up on the West Coast, ended up uh, in Northern California for majority of my uh, childhood and um, got out of the Air Force in 2005. I am a 15 year working musician, failed star. Um, I've, I, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there is a lot there. Um, but uh, I opened up my media production studio. It was actually a recording studio back in 2005 is where I, my serious full-time entrepreneur uh, journey began. And in about a year in, I realized that surviving off of starving musicians was a bad idea. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I pivoted from there and, um, and then eventually grew up into a full creative agency. We had multi-million dollar agency running 25 employees, 13,000 square foot facility, blah, 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 blah. Wow. I was absolutely miserable. As a CEO, I owned a job. I didn't own a business. And I just said, I got to tear this thing down. And so I did. And I, I, I broke it up in, and the legacy production studio still stands and it runs on its own. And my, my, uh, all my effort goes into now what is called Buzzworthy Integrated Marketing. And we're a website marketing for service-based businesses. And Awesome. So um, what made you get into the service-based business type? stuff. I mean, it's because uh, you have a background in Air Force, um, military background. Uh, what kind of made you think of that? So it comes back from being the musician uh, turned into media production, media production, and my prowess for marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was all, I always had jobs, you know, even as a musician, um, I, I had back end jobs and they were always in sales and marketing. I just had a knack for it. And so as time went on as a media production studio in Alaska, there you're either dealing with a uh, one-off person working out of their, their home or big agencies. And there was this big gap right in the center for small to medium-sized businesses. And so that creative agency was born out of the need to fill that void. Mm-hmm. And I just end up being really good at it. And I pick service-based business because I get to deal with the owners and I really enjoy working with other entrepreneurs because we can talk entrepreneur mm-hmm. and versus uh, product. And, you know, you're pushing products. It's not human-based. And I'm, I'm, I'm a human uh, interactor. I, I'm a people person. Um, so I, it, it's where I get the most enjoyment because I get to watch people go, yeah, so I bought a boat because of what we did, or I sold my business for three X uh, income for the last, for the next three years, dot, 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 whatever it, that the, their goal is. I actually hear the goal, uh, get, um, uh, accomplished. And yeah. that just, that's where I, I Dude, get those my, are, those are the awesome conversations. The ones that, uh, that I, 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 I cringe at is, uh, yeah. So my target this year is to get us a new boat for the family. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to make payroll this week. Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's bad. And and then uh, and then you, I mean for me, uh, so I'm not a digital marketing expert. So I'm going to be out of this conversation a little bit. I love digital marketing. I'm just uh, I have just enough knowledge to be dangerous. 
probably a nuisance to someone like you because I, I, I can ask the questions. I'm like, um, so uh, there is no such thing as a dumb question. Well, the only, the only I, dumb question is a question not asked. Well, I got this email from this person and they said that you, you have to do this to succeed. What do you think about that? Like that's the emails that I send out. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, so um, how Those are the questions I get from Tersh too? I asked him that yesterday. So tell me, like, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, actually how we're leaving stuff on the table and like, what's the, what's the number one thing that you see that's just like, wow, dude, like, what's going on here? Like, what, what are you, what are you thinking? Like wh when you say that, what's, what is the thing that you've seen to make you have that reaction? So it's when I hear um, somebody who is struggling to get new clients mm -hmm. and they don't even have a website this is where I cringe the hardest. There's people um, out there that don't have websites. Oh, they think that they're, that they just need to be on Facebook. I mean, Facebook, it, you get a free website with Google GMB and mm -hmm. Google my business and, or they went and, and they signed up for Wix and they used a template and they just, and they still have some of the gibberish in there for placeholders and all that other stuff. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, so much <laughs> potential just laying there. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I love that. I, and I'll tell you, so I have a website that I built. Um, I built it in 2014 and okay. it was one of those things where like whenever I do it, I do something like I'll super nerd out research. I was like, uh, what's that guy's name? Josh Nelson. Like I was, <clears throat> I was, I was reading all his articles and stuff and, uh, um, Michael um, Stelzner, like I was going through all his stuff and just like, all right, this is what I need on the website. This is what I need on the website. And man, I built this website on WordPress. Like I was teaching myself how to use these plugins and all that stuff. And uh, like super OCD deep dive, <laughs> like just unhealthily deep dive and made this website that shot up to the top of the rankings. And then I was like, all right, next unhealthy, you know, task that I'm going to do over here. And I completely ignored that one. And it has done, has not been updated since then. And it's still ranked second, third, fourth on the first page and even has Latin, like it's done <laughs> updates and there's just this Latin on this random page. And I'm like, oof, that looks uh it, it doesn't so take much. It doesn't take much. I'm sorry that you were, you got stuck working in your business and not on your business, but <laughs> yeah, you know, hopefully you, you, you got enough business to make it worth your while. So, but that is something that I get a lot of is that I did all this stuff, but they don't have the same outcome as you did. They'll sit there and tell me, well, I did, I did all the things and I listened <laughs> to Gary V for the social media pointers and I did all this stuff and I still don't get any business. It's, it's just, a, it's just a racket. Just yeah, so one of the things that I learned from from those guys and from um, you know Michael Stelz, just a lot of different people. Donald Miller um, was another mm -hmm. one. Uh, <clears throat> was it, it was less about how pretty it was and more about the back end stuff that was on it. And that's SEO, yes. that, that I've kind of taken with me is mm -hmm. like um, the the designer side of things. Uh, so you can have a really good web look, good looking website that just doesn't rank at all. And because you, you've done some crappy stuff now with, uh, with that being said, that is the extent of my knowledge. And I am bowing out. This conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can, I can tag in there. I, right. I love this topic because uh, I get to look at websites daily as part of my, my day job. Um, and Buzz is totally right. There is a ton. There's, I've just actually building a site for someone who only used the Google My Business website and they wonder why they weren't getting any traffic. Um, and then the other ones that are like, yeah, I spent X amount of dollars, which that X, that X is usually a big number. And I look at their site and I am, I just shake my head and I'm unbelievably depressed at what they spent their money on. Um, so that kind of leads us into like the main topic of this. Do you want to start going over what is the rule of 26 and how it applies to uh, service businesses? 
Sure. So the rule of 26 is ba- is a simplification of digital marketing strategy. Um, I, I wrote the book out of the necessity to help people like uh, Tersh that wanted to know what was going on, but didn't need to nerd out to be involved. And so I went through, there's 37 KPIs, key performance indicators that you can track on a service-based website, okay? And, um, but that's too many to look at for anybody. I don't even want to look at that many, but uh, HubSpot likes you to to look at those because it makes them seem more sophisticated. And (laughs) entrepreneurs don't want that. They want results. The revenue needle needs to move. And so I wrote this book to, to do that, just that, right? Simplify it down. And so the rule of 26 breaks your strategy down into three objectives. Increase each of these three objectives by 26% and you get 100% more revenue. When you're done with that, you do it again and now you have quadrupled your revenue from when you started, okay? So the three objectives is increasing uh, website unique traffic, your conversion rate, which means people come to the website and then do something that is profitable for you, usually signing up for something, contacting you for a quote, whatever that looks like, and then your average value per client. Sometimes that can be as simple as looking at what you're charging for people. You know, how when's the last time you increased your rates? Are you 26% behind inflation? I mean, there's all sorts of things that we we cover in the book and they're all really simple. Just one, two, three, some, you can read the books only 119 pages. I'm not here to bore people with my, all my stories. I'm there to help them make more money, right? <laughs> so <laughs> One thing I can tell you that is if you haven't increased your prices, at least once, maybe twice this year, if you're an HVAC, uh, yeah, you are giving stuff away. Because right. You are way behind. Way behind. We just way behind. Notified that our, price, our, our equipment price is going up another 8% next month. So uh, That's the second or third time, right? Yep. Third time. This year? I have I had yeah. a carp, my car. We are getting carpet in my basement and we waited six months. Just, just we got busy and we went back and we had to pay more just yeah. for the carpet. Mm -hmm. you know it's just like it's it's ridiculous it's going up so how do you so my question as the as a business owner and i'm i'm busy doing tons of other things Mm -hmm. how what do you find is the best way for me to track the conversion rates and the unique uh the unique traffic because i i can like i know the average value of, of clients. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I can figure that out with our CRM pretty mm-hmm. easy. Uh, but what I want to know is uh, how do I know for sure that they came from my website versus uh-huh. uh, kind of, I don't know, they seen the vans, they seen our yard signs, and then they Googled us and then, you know, they, they float right. through the website. Like right. how is there that differentiator so you're never going to have a 100% filter to where you say, okay, this is exactly how somebody got to you. Okay. I actually had a gym that we took from 200 members to 2000 members in a two year period. Mm-hmm. And we actually, they, they wanted to know where their advertising dollars were going. Right. And what was working. And so they did a, a survey and says, how did you hear about us? And they put TV, radio, internet, Google, and then, and I said, well, put newspaper. And they're like, well, but we're not in the newspaper. I said, just put it on the newspaper. And they got a few hundred in. I was like, how many came from the newspaper? Right. And you, and I don't remember the number right off the top of my head. I believe it. But you know, it's like people don't know. So you, that you can't rely. You could get a general consensus, mm-hmm. but the thing with marketing, no piece of your marketing works in a vacuum. Yeah. True. It all is an ecosystem that you're bringing. So your top of mind awareness for local services. You need that. Put stuff on your van. I had I had somebody call me from California that they have three sets of vans with three different brands on them. They replace windows, okay, and they do a curbside. And I'm like, why do you have three brands? Why are you competing against yourself for top of mind awareness, <laughs> right? Actually, they were in Phoenix. I'm sorry. So um, I was like, get one brand, and what's on the side of each of the trucks? Nothing. What? No. So back to your question. Google Analytics is a very strong tool and Google Search Console even stronger. If you set your conversions and tags and all that good stuff and, and get somebody who knows how to do it, don't try to geek out on your own. It doesn't cost. I, I think 
I actually operated my book for free. Like if you need help getting at least tracking what your, your website's doing, I will, I will help you do that. That's, that shouldn't cost you anything. Once you have that set up, you just rely on those numbers. You filter out the robots. You make sure that you're, you're tagging what you are. If the phone numbers are what you're worried about, get dedicated phone numbers for the website. Mm-hmm. People don't remember phone numbers anymore. Yeah. They click on them, right? So they're coming through your website. Google will tell you whether they're coming from search, paid, social, and then you have referrals. So it might be a backlink that you have from a co-op that you were doing, or maybe you'll have a strategic partner that has your logo on their website and they're coming there and you can see that traffic's all there. That's what the beauty about digital marketing is. Everything is trackable. So you're able to set it up where like, like you said, affiliate marketer or, a, a, you know, affiliate or mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that, if they click on the link from their website, Mm-hmm. Hell that they did that. So tell me, I can that. set that up as a conversion. Okay. So that's one conversion too. I wouldn't put it as a conversion. I would just see what my referrals are from that, uh-huh. and then from there, you know, it's technically when you work with affiliates, you technically want to have that on a, a what they call a sales funnel. So it's a specific dedicated page that just talks about whatever they're talking about, so that the client doesn't get the potential client doesn't get confused with all the other things that you offer. And it's just and so you're keeping them in this goat rope to get them to you as fast as possible because they obviously are interested in it. Now let's get them to reach out and convert. Okay, so I want to ask about sales funnel, but I don't want to go in that rabbit hole yet. Uh, okay. it's a deep <laughs> write it down uh, <laughs> that so what I, I my question before that is i've always read and heard that uh um you need to make sure that your 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 nap is consistent your name address and phone number is consistent across the social media or all digital stuff um so with that being said i ask a lot of people this just out of curiosity, how does it affect us if we use call tracking numbers? So, and can we use multiple call tracking numbers on the same website so that we can tell if the header or if it's, in, I mean, is, is that even, should we do that? Should we use Google analytics to see which buttons are being used or. Yeah, I would, I would use something like Hotjar and, and take a look at where people are clicking Okay. Um, you can get for a small business, you can get that for free, hotjar.com. Um, and, and do that. You don't necessarily have to have different phone numbers. You could do a click to call and use something called call rails. Yeah. And that will actually track those types of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the cost on call rails is. I, I feel like in the digital age, phone numbers are obsolete. I think I feel like I could have five phone numbers on my website and it wouldn't affect anything because nobody's exactly. paying attention to the actual numbers exactly. just as much as they're not paying attention to the URLs, the actual address. So when you do a sales funnel, keeping that, now I know when I'm in a sales funnel, cause I just look at the URL and I see their, their core. So like I would say I was buzzworthy.biz, right. And I put you into a sales funnel. I'm either going to have a slash to whatever that page is so that I know you're going where I need you to be for whatever you're clicked on, or I might have a subdomain. So it'll be maybe a uh, website dot buzzworthy.biz. And so now you're in my sales funnel for websites type of thing. So how uh, service business owners, we are, 99% of the time, ah, probably not even that much anymore. It's probably about a 90% of the time we were technicians uh-huh. and we became a service manager. And they mm-hmm. were like, you know what? This is a piece of cake. I'm going to do this on my own. So we decided to get to go out on our own and ignorance is bliss until we actually dive in. <laughs> uh, but a lot of a, uh, a buzzword is, uh, click funnels or sales funnels. Right. And once you Google it, it's Ugh. a monstrosity yes. of information. Mm-hmm. How difficult is that? How in depth is a sales funnel? And what, what, like, should we tell me the process of like when we should even get into doing something like that or, or- sales? Yeah, I, I get you, Terf. Sales <laughs> funnels do not have to be hard. Okay. You could geek out on Salesforce. You could get into ClickFunnels, Kartra. There's a bunch of builders out there. And we actually went down that road and tested it ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we found out that actually your WordPress website can create all the sales funnels you need. All a sales funnel is, um, is a page specific to a 
a topic that is that you pointed them to. And all you're doing is just keeping these blinders on to make sure they're not looking around at anything. And you're just like, this is what we need you to pay attention to right now. Now click call, do something now or go buy. And that's all it is. Okay. I actually set up my new website to where each of the sections are their own funnel to where we say, what do you need at the top? I need this. Great. Click here. Now we have the opportunity to help you do it yourself. We could do it with you or we can do it for you. So at the top of every page, it's like, here is search engine marketing. Do you want it done? Do it yourself, done with you, done for you. You click on that. Then we just talk about how we do it for you or how we do it with you or how, and those are technically funnels, right? We're, We're bringing it out here and we're bringing it down. That's all we're doing, right? So I tell people, stop spending money on sales funnels and stop trying to, you know, make a click funnel, which is a brand out there work for you because it, I had a urologist actually tried to do click funnels. It it was horrible. And I was like, you have this gorgeous website that's got all these blogs and all this SEO juice and all the things, right? I'm like, why are you playing over here? It doesn't do anything different. It's just a ploy by a company to get people to get a drag and drop WYSIWYG tool and pay the $200 a month to be part of their club. Yeah. That's, I I feel like that is I, that's the answer that I was looking for as far as like, that's what I wanted to hear because I didn't want to spend $200 a month on something right. like that. But right. at the same time, I, I really want to. Um, so I, maybe it's just me. I don't know. But I feel like other business owners are the same way where it's like, um, I can't just say, hey, Buzz, do this. Give me money. Like, make me money don't talk to me again. Like I I, I kind (laughs) of need to know what you're doing, not necessarily how it works a hundred percent, but kind Mm -hmm. of like the concept behind it. And there was, there's so much, I feel like double talk when it comes to, to funnels that, and just like the uncertainty with it, that, that I've just never really dove down in it. I can tell you that um, our scheduling software that we have inside on our website on our header uh-huh. yes is kind of a click funnel because it, it but it kind of asks you questions and then you know schedules it shows real-time availability and, and schedules a, a service call um we would call that a, a conversion tool okay so because that's a call to action yes and, and right. very much so is yeah, yeah. if they're tell clicking me, on that you've already done your job okay so tell me this how many how many pages inside of there is too many pages? Because I've watched, I looked in my Google Analytics a couple of times and I could see that, you know, they would click on this page and then, you know, 5% would drop off. And then they click on this page and then, you know, another mm-hmm. 10% would drop off and they mm-hmm. click on this page and 26% would drop off or mm-hmm. whatever. And mm-hmm. so like how many clicks do you think is too many clicks to get into the funnel or to, to schedule a service call? There is never too many clicks there's too few call to actions. So you need to get that. You have to take a look at your website as a client, a potential client. Why are they coming to you? That's my baby. (laughs) (laughs) Right. right? (laughs) (laughs) So um, people really, usually what they try to do is they try to anchor a call to action at the top of the page thinking that's where everybody's going to go to do it right when they're ready to go. But when you're in the content, there are natural breaks where people can make a decision whether they want more information or they want more action. Oh, okay. And if you can feel that conversation and you do it in a sales call anyway, just pay attention to when a certain topic comes up. How does that go? What, where does it stop? And what do you ask there? right? When is the right time in your sales process to do that? And you do that on your website. It doesn't have to be any more uh, complicated than that. Now, can you dive further? Yes. And you should because SEO loves that, right? Read more. You want to have links to sub pages or blog posts, whatever, wherever that information is on your website, click, have them linked back and forth. Google loves that. And it allows the people who want to geek out to geek out. So That's what great. happens if our, our page is brand new and we don't have all those other pages? You, like- time. It's just time. Okay. Either I tell people launch early. Like we just launched our website. Mm-hmm. It is not perfect. Mm-hmm. 
But if I waited till it's perfect, we would never launch it. <laughs> There's no such thing as a perfect website, just period, end of story. Yeah. We have 35 pages in, that, in, our, in our new website, right? And that's the skinny version. <laughs> And that's not even including any blogs. We have no blogs on the website right now. Like, I'm not going to wait for that because something is better than nothing. And what we have today is better than our last website. And so I tell clients all the time, I practice what I preach, right? Get it out there. You're, you, the, the amount of people that you're going to gain is infinitely more than the amount of people you're going to lose by not launching it. Tell me this. So Josh, ahead, one last time, Josh, and then I promise I <laughs> mute myself. He said he's going to bow. Patiently waiting over here. I, <laughs> he's jumping at the bit. <laughs> um, have you ever read the book? Um, they ask you answer. It's. I have read books like it. Yes. Okay, so it's basically every time. So we have on our debrief form what's uh, every service call our service experts. They, are, they debrief with our dispatch team. And one of the questions on their debrief form is, what's one question that the client asked you? And my target with that is uh, the accumulation of those questions and creating a video and a blog post of those questions to help answer them before they ever ask them. Um, sure. What's your thoughts on something like that? And the reason I say this is because in that book, there's one thing that they talked about and we did this um i i'll be honest with you i haven't tracked the traffic on no worries, no worries. uh but basically it was um listing out the the top five hvac companies in savannah mm -hmm. and making yourself not on that list why well to show authenticity that the, if you're not going to use us, uh -huh. these are the top five other companies out there. To okay. So then you're right. directing them to people, in my opinion, who are going to be closer to apples to apples. So it's uh -huh. not like chucking a truck that's over here that has zero overhead or what mm -hmm. they perceive as zero overhead and they don't know how to price their jobs. So their prices are incorrect and they're actively going out of business versus another competitor who is understands pricing and is going to be comparable in pricing to us. So if they do go and ask them, then it's based on experience. Like, Oh, wow. I got a warm, warm and fuzzies from, you know, Tersh and service emperor, where does mm -hmm. it get the warm and fuzzies from them and their price is about the same. So I'm going to go back with Tersh. I think it, I mean, I never compete on price. I, I, I tell my service based business, if you're competing on price, you're racing to the bottom. Yeah. Right. Cause somebody <laughs> always does it cheaper. But I also tell, and I have clients, so tell me, it's like, well, I can go get X for cheaper somewhere else. It's like, that's great. If, if pick Same. who you want to work with, yeah. it's people. That's why I like about service-based business. We're marketing the people that we're working with and not everybody's a good fit. So if they're price sensitive, let them go because they're going to be a pain in your butt anyway. <laughs> like just get like, I get people who are bonded and all the other things. And then it's like, all right, how many trucks do you got? You know, who's your, who's the manager? Do you actually have an active owner or is it you that's doing all of the things? Okay. Now I know that I'm going to, I'm going to be bottlenecked by however busy you are. No. Right. So, but other people, they're willing to wait and that's fine too. Right. There is more business than you can possibly get Tersh yeah. period. So don't worry about where you land. Okay. Just be the best you can be everywhere you land. That's awesome. Josh and I actually were literally having this conversation yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> <So I'm smiling. laughs> Josh, I, I have officially. <laughs> you can't hear me. Turn his mic off. <laughs> Just say, <laughs> there you Where's go. Julie? <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, Josh, let's do this. <laughs> so. Buzz, we didn't even talk about this beforehand. So I actually own a digital marketing company. I was in HVAC for nine years. So yeah. similar experience to Tersh kind of turned into the digital marketing side because that's what I, where I've always kind of gone with uh, my experience. Mm -hmm. So I have these, I have the same conversations with people on a daily basis. And I want to get your thoughts on, because you can see where, where Tersh's questions were going yeah. with digital. You literally can go like a million different directions. So I want to try to bring it back in a little bit. And if somebody wants to objectively look at their website today mm -hmm. while they're listening or right after the show, 
what are like three or four things they should be looking for to start with as far as uh, maybe on the conversion side of things, which I think is mm-hmm. this, what the second rule of mm-hmm. 26 mm-hmm. to start there. So that way when they do get traffic or the traffic that they already get now, they can convert it into a lead or an appointment or a sale. Mm-hmm. So the first thing is tracking. Like there, most people are not tracking properly. And so they get bad information in making bad decisions from bad information, getting bad results. Okay. So once that happens, then you can see whether or not you, how you compare to the national averages for your industry. I don't care if it's HVAC, roofing, um, lawyers, everybody, every industry has an average conversion rate from their website uh, for websites in their industry. So um, once you've benchmarked yourself, you can decide whether or not it's something you need. Okay. Finding out and uh, filtering out all the bots and everything from your traffic is another piece because you don't, it, there's most websites are getting less than 500 unique human visitors a month. Most uh, service-based businesses. Okay. Um, only 5% of websites are going to even rank on number one in Google. Okay. So finding out what that actually looks like. Once you have that, your answer becomes extremely apparent where you need to go. Do you only have 80 to 125 people landing on your page with a 2% or a less than 2% conversion rate? Well, then we know we need to get more traffic because we, at least we know that for every hundred people, we're going to get two calls, right? So if we increase that by 26%, we should get 26% more calls, right? So that's what the rule of 26 is really boiling it down. Keep it super simple. The KISS method. Okay. Um, I thought it I was keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> it super depends simple. what you want to put in the answers. <laughs> it's 2021, Tersh. You can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> can't call someone stupid. <laughs> can't call somebody stupid. They'll kick you off the Facebooks. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the tracking, um, as her said, most people are, uh, most contractors don't know how to do this. Right. Um, do you want to walk through like maybe like a quick tip or two? And I know, it, I know it can go a lot deeper than that, but like really basic tracking, where can they get started? Um, actually in the book, I walk people through how to do it. And I offer to help anybody who needs their website connected to properly connected to um, Google and uh, Google Analytics and Google Search Console for free because it's something that yes we have I think we have a link to a page and I don't have it on me right now and you could go and dive in there and try to figure it out but if you're if you still connect it to where you're not tracking the right things you're still going to be in the same place where you began so. Um, I always say, just grab somebody, even if you have to go to Fiverr or Upwork or just, you know, somebody who knows enough, don't try to do it yourself. It's, it's not worth the headache. So should we not use um, like SEM rush or if you're geeking out, you can, that's fine. That's going to tell you what, what deeper into SEO specifically is. Okay. But where Josh is asking is that how do we get it connected? And if you go to Google and say, Google Analytics, sign up for Google Analytics, right? So just Google, Google Analytics, there'll be a, the first one up top, click on it and say, all right, you want to connect a website. If you get into that at 15 minutes and you're, you're not done, stop and just <laughs> get somebody like Josh or myself, just help you out. Most of us will do it. Yeah. Yeah. it. It does. It's not supposed to take more than 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And the biggest thing with uh, the, those things are you have to... Like Search Console, you have to verify with your domain, which yep. um, when, mm-hmm. when people I talk to, they, they barely know their login to their right. domain, like GoDaddy. <laughs> I, I have to like beg them to go look for it. Yep. Um, or for analytics, you have to put a snippet of code on your website in a certain spot. Yep. Yep. And that's where it gets difficult because people are like, I have no idea what this is. Exactly. And that's um, why I just don't so get that's I, where, why, why give them that headache, right? Like I could give you yep. a website. We used to have pages for SEO to where you, you could get your, so we have a proprietary um, SEO management tool that basically is the simplification of SEM rush gotcha. where it literally, you plug in the keywords you want it. These are the pages we want to rank for. And they give you the actions and it says how to do it, what, what to do, why it's important, how to do it. 
which platform are you using? Are you using Wix, Squarespace, WordPress, dot, dot, dot. And it just gives them what they need. Because some, some people have more time than money, so they have no other choice but to do it themselves. And so that's why we, we did those. But we have these onboarding processes that still have to happen. And even with those, we end up on the phone with them and helping them. Yeah, if you really hate your life and you just are bored out of your mind, <laughs> you have nothing to do with your life. SEM rush is my answer to you. <laughs> you you want to talk about going in five like five places directions at oh one time? God. That's oh, it right there. <laughs> now I have never had so many browsers open on my Windows. Oh, that's like hilarious. holy cow! Like I don't even know what this word is. Let me get <laughs> this word. Oh, now there's another <laughs> rabbit hole. Like yeah, no that no thank you. Yeah, uh, you're working in your me, business on not on your business. They there. me emails like. <laughs> this is your potential, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, nope, not even going to click on it. Cause if I <laughs> click on it, it's, I'm just, I'm, I'm done for. Yeah. All right, Josh, what else you got? <laughs> well, I was, uh, the, so the homepage of your website, which is primarily, especially for service businesses, that's mm -hmm. where most of the traffic goes mm -hmm. because you can only talk about air conditioning repair in so many different ways to separate yourself from your competitor. Right. Right. Um, so on your homepage, do you have um, some things that maybe more on the aesthetic side or things that actionable type advice for somebody that is, Hey, I'm going to put on new glasses today. I'm going to look <laughs> at my website as it's not my baby. Right. And I'm going to see what it looks like. Or maybe they're going to give it to a friend and be like, Hey, yeah. look at my website. Would you do business with me? Right. And what kind of actionable advice do, would you have for somebody on that? All right. So when it comes to home pages, the first thing to do is make it easy to get in contact with you. For for home services, home service based businesses, I actually allow my clients to have the phone number at the top, or at least a click to call for a mobile. Okay, um, because there's one thing you don't want is people coming to your website on a on a, a desktop grabbing the phone number and then leaving because it creates what we we'll call a bounce rate. And that bounce meant meaning that they came to the website, didn't do anything and goes away. That tells Google they didn't see what they wanted to see. So it's counterintuitive for most, right? Unless you have an emergency uh, program, then yeah, they're like, you need boom, 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 like flood mitigation and stuff like that, right? And fire mitigation. So um, that's number one. Number two, your banner, okay? Make your banner you, not a not a stock image. Thank you. you. <laughs> right? That's it's like, great it's just you, right? And then the <laughs> second thing is, what are your top three core uh, competencies? What, where do you get the most satisfaction, profit, um, ease of work, whatever it is, what are those three things? Not the laundry list 12 deep, right? Don't have drop down menus that have seven or eight options, right? Our website, it's where we go need based. And service based businesses are usually need based. They came to you for a reason. So make it extremely easy for them to point and click at what they need. So, would whatever go, that is, right? Would you go as simple as need air conditioning and go to my website, Tersh? Okay. You will see it says, I need. Website redesigned or designed. Okay. I need this, and I, I spell it out. No, no gibberish in, in that menu. That's all it is. Just like, what do you need? And you don't know what you need? Then you're reading about what we are and who we are and what we stand for. And then at the end, it's like, do you want to talk? Let's talk. Okay. Yeah, so we're, guilty, we're, like, we're, we're all guilty. 100% of us, no matter if you think you are or not, we're guilty of using trade specific oh. lingo and mm -hmm. like HVAC is this is a, a prime example of it. Mm -hmm. Like our mm -hmm. literally our phone number is 748 HVAC. And most people are like, mm, don't know what that is. Unless they're commercial and you know, mm -hmm. it, which is some part again, of it. But right. but yeah, to I, I that's what I, I I struggle with because whenever I wonder should I be should I be trying to get um people who are searching HVAC or should I be searching AC repair or AC replacement? Well, do, do, you need to, you need to write your website as though somebody was searching on the internet for what you are. So what, what is the traffic 
for your service, right? How do people find you? What questions do they ask, right? SCM Rush has some stuff in there. Um, mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. They don't have it anymore? I'm not gonna, I'm not. That's oh, you're not going back in there. There you go. I'm on, not, in Dizio, don't in, open that browser. Yeah, right. There you go. In Dizio, <laughs> we actually have a keyword researcher to show people like they put in the, their keywords and then we give them a list of, of uh, terms that are used and how much it's used every month on Google, right? And so once you have identified that, now you use those specific keywords in your content and that's how they get to you. And that's how they're looking for you. So do it the way that they're doing it. Don't try to guess, just find out what they are actually typing into the Google and, and talk that way. So what happens if, so Savannah is the world's largest small town and mm -hmm. people perceive Savannah to be a lot larger than what it actually is, actual by population. Um, what happens if you're in a town like Savannah or somewhere out in the country and, mm -hmm. and you do something like this because you can search in Google like mm -hmm. and find out these keyword searches also. What happens if it's not enough of a, an area that's like there's not enough traffic, period, to... to then just use the name, name of the town that you're in. Best air conditioning service tax in Savannah. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Done. Like just make it because you don't, you're going to get all of the traffic when it comes to that. Like, because there's, you're, you are going to be one of the few, if not one of like, let's say five or 10 in a tiny town um, or an area. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're just competing against the big dogs. Right. And they're like, well, we don't want to do the service call from 45 minutes away out into, you know, Podunk, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And so we want somebody who is within a certain radius. So they'll look for air conditioning service near me, right? Google will know where you're at. So you don't even have that there. Boom, here it is. But if you say, hey, we're the hometown hero, uh, HVAC heroes of Savannah, and you use Savannah every once in a while, you know, Tersh came to Savannah, Georgia because of dot, dot, dot in the about page. And you, do, you just mention where you're from. Don't go up there and go Savannah, blah, blah, blah. You could do that if that's what you're doing, right? But nine times out of 10, you are you just mention where you're at and then your contact page has it as well. You, you've you done what Google needs. They know where you're at. Cool. Josh, I'm going to let you wrap up if you have any closing questions or thoughts there. Because we could literally um, talk. I could go on. Day <laughs> on the, so. Sounds like we're going to have to have a sequel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, we, we might absolutely will have to do that because uh, I'm sure, I mean, we, we're really just scratching the surface of a much deeper topic. Did we even uh, scratch just, anything? I, mean, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't get to the sniff part, so we didn't scratch it hard enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but uh, if, if Buzz, you want to remind people about your, your book and where they can find you again, just in case sure. they are like Tertian didn't write it down. <laughs> There it is. The rule of 26. You can go to rule of two six dot com. Uh, that's two, the numbers two and six dot com. It's got a link to it uh, di directly there. Or you can go to buzzworthy dot biz as B U Z Z W O R T H Y dot B I Z. And we have a link to the book there as well as all of the cool do it yourself, done with you, and done for you opportunities to help your website marketing. Buzz, awesome. thank you. No, that's, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, Thanks really for having me. I, 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 Josh, let's let's geek out. I, I love I love talking <laughs> to other marketers, man. So if you want me back, let's, let's do it. We'll have a we'll have the the geek out session. We'll 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 put your you'll be in charge of the mute button, and then <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just that type of person where I'm just so inquisitive that it's like, oh, really? Rabbit hole. Let's go. <laughs> Cool. Well, I did awesome. give a shout out to Dr. Lawrence, uh, Jamal Lawrence. He is, uh, he was commenting on the live feed on Facebook and anybody else who has any questions or anything, uh, don't hesitate. I added a couple of links here in the live feed. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to Buzz, uh, obviously full of, full of knowledge and uh, willing to help and, and pick up a copy of, of his book um, on Amazon. But with that being said, uh, Josh, you have anything else you want to add before I close out? No, uh, I guess, except you need to, I think the my biggest takeaway was to urge contractors and business owners or managers, if you're in charge of operations, 
look at your website with a different set of glasses. Because I think you, I think you'll, if you start looking at the customer journey, like, hey, customer goes here, what happens next? It'll open your eyes if you think about it just a little differently. Because I'll, I would venture to guess 70 to 80% of contractors' websites I look at, look, look at are just not set up well to actually get a phone call, a lead, a form submission, et cetera. So look at it like that. Um, and as Buzz noted, he's got DIY done for you type stuff as well. Take a look at his stuff because you might, if you, if you like to learn this stuff, he may be able to help you out. Yeah, absolutely. And um, thank you, uh, Josh. You said no and then started talking for like 10 minutes, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Thanks for not uh, cutting me off. <laughs> Let's mute Josh. Uh, so, uh, no, but <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, no, that's good. Good stuff. Um, it was something very important that I was going to say there. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Josh. You just you ruined it for me. You're no. welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Buzz, for coming on the show. And uh, thanks for having me. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening and watching this episode of Service Business Mastery Podcast. Uh, it is a podcast focused on service business owners, managers, and technicians who are considering becoming business owners themselves. Our target with this show is to help answer some unasked questions. And when it comes to digital marketing, there's a lot of unasked questions because we just don't know what we don't know. So uh, our target is to help uh, just educate you so that you know what to ask. Even if you don't use Buzz, even if you don't use Josh, uh, just you know what to ask your digital marketing agency and and hold them accountable because I feel like that's the big one of the biggest ripoffs in our industry is people that are spending thousands and thousands of dollars with a digital marketing agency and getting little to no results just because they said it's going to take time when in reality they're really not doing anything. Um, so which it happens too often it does happen way too often oh. but with that being said i hope you all have a wonderful and safe day and we'll talk again next week we'll see you what's up so one of the questions that i most often get from audience uh, members like yourself is uh, more information about how to learn more about running a business just in general the education side of things when it comes to the business world the service business world and I'm super excited to be able to share with you the opportunity to go uh, to this awesome event in Las Vegas. Uh, if you are ready to take your contracting business to the next level, you got to attend this event. It's called EGIA uh, Contractors University. It's their annual event. It's called Epic 2021. And uh, it's one of the most highly anticipated educational events of the year for home service industry. Uh, Epic 2021 will take place over October 28th through 29th at Paris, Las Vegas. If you've never been, which I'm one of them, uh, then I'm super excited to go there. And I hear that it's, it's amazing. Uh, just this venue alone is really awesome. So um, the event is actually going to feature celebrity keynote speakers. Uh, such as Damon John of Shark Tank, John Taffer of Bar Rescue. I'm sure you've seen the show, at least the previews of it. Uh, so you know who these guys are. And then also Captain Sully Sullenberger. Uh, he's the airline pilot from The Miracle on the Hudson, which that was a really cool movie. Uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out. Uh, there'll be a breakout sessions that are delivered by legendary industry experts. Access to best-in-class product and service providers. Dynamic networking opportunities and an unforgettable evening party. You can even come and hang out with us on Media Row as we record uh, Service Business Mastery Live. So if you ever wanted to be on the show, ever want to watch, just come hang out and, and chill with us on Media Row. You can also get 50 bucks off uh, registration if you use the code TERSH50 at epic2021event.com. Coupon code is TERSH50, and it's spelled T-E-R-S-H at epic2021event.com. Uh, you definitely do not want to miss this event. I look forward to seeing you there. <laughs>